and Oriah the owl fell. Talons tucked away, great wings too. Only retresses carve the air into a direction toward that moving moment below, squirming along, blind to the great amber eyes fixed on its useless progress. Even in the wind of this descent, Oriah hears the bleeding racket of her prey as it struggles across the field. She's not the only one. Swiveling her head, Oriah catches the rustle of something beyond the tree line, moving closer, moving faster. A coyote, maybe? In a race of hunger, a song Oriya knows too well. But tonight, the song of hunger has many parts. Nearer still, another pursuit, silky. Whispering through weaving grass, not as fast as the closing in on the tree line, but just as hungry, a snake. Though tonight neither Russell nor Thrush has a chance, Oria will arrive first, easily. Except as she tucks her head, Oria catches the hush of a third rival. This, a song of hunger above. Falling with her, calling her off. But Oria neither alters nor slows her course. Rimages pulling in tighter, streamlining every angle down to her deadly beak, focusing only on that flat, fast rising world. Below, two rabbits catch sight of the warring raptors dropping from the sky. Terror bounces them free of the grass, great leaps following for cover. Thrush doesn't pause, but the gaining momentarily stutter at news of these fleeing cottontails. Oriah, though, never deviates from the squirming thing below, served up by this blurring world. It stops, or maybe it fell over, this dark thing still squirming for a breath more. Paws then at the ground, big as a rabbit, bigger as a skunk. Is it a skunk? Smaller. Nothing white there, only mottled black with patches inkier than black, followed by a whispering little tail like a snake, only... <laughs> Meat for days is all Oriah knows. Meat for days for her little ones, for her and for her mate if he ever returns. But he will never return. He left moons ago. Oriah's talons extend, razor the air, great wings cutting apart the wind, finding purchase, familiar shock waves rattling into her, driving her laterally too, even as her legs keep extending downward, driving downward talons wide now as any skunk or rabbit. The same is true above her, just above her. Oriah doesn't need to look, won't look, knows another pair of talons, razors after her, another mantle and nape driving hard to knock her down, blunt her into the flat, fast rising ground, sees then the prey for himself, except snatch. Oriah has her prey, great wings snapping wide then, at once the wind of her fall, hurling her upward, build to crown diving skyward, of course the snake thrushing cannot know yet its prey is lost. The coyote, though, and it is a coyote emerging from the tree line, stops in the grass dumbfounded at the sight of the seizure, looking away just as fast, looking for the rabbits now, skulking off. Only Oriah sees. The coyote turn, then leap, snapping at her attacker, an eagle, male. Only Oriya sees the snake uncoil, then breaking down those following wings, instances she knows as clearly as summer lightning. She has lived her long life with such flashes of lightning which her long life has taught her to disbelieve. They are what never finds a place in this world. The thing squirming in her talons is real, though. Warm and heavy, and even these hundred feet up, only slightly confused.
Oraya feels its heart beating. And as if to answer, Oraya beats her wings faster, too. Of course, she could kill it now, beak it to death. And would, too, if her attacker had given up. Then, as Oraya wheels farther away from the clearing, rising still higher above the dense trees and rocky climbs, she sees her mistake. This is no male eagle, but another great horned owl like herself. Likely a mother, too. Also looking for prey to bring back to her fledglings. Perhaps that's why she keeps up this pursuit, flying still harder with altitude her advantage, a wide wheel closing the distance while... cuts loose of her deadly bill. She is bigger than Oriah, much bigger, beautiful too, and more powerful, enormous wings shadowing the land. And without meat clutched beneath her downy belly, she flies faster, much faster. Oriah knows she will have to dive again, only her attacker dives first, diving away. Oriah doesn't understand. Those beautiful, enormous wings falling away, Oriah only hears the an instant later, and by then she's diving too. Instinct evades the echoing crack, 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 following her attacker's spiral toward the high weeds. Except when Oriah at last levels out, her attacker continues to plummet. The way the great wings twist then and go askew as they flip twice across the ground before lodging in a thicket of thorns sickens Oriah. Even her talons loosen, but a small heart still beats there, almost fast enough to burst. Soon, Oriah reaches the cover of remembered branches, but not even a whisper on the air, gliding beside her dark trunks above her dark steams. Except her home is not there. Or it is there, but it is a home now wrong. High edges broken. Bedding scattered. The rest... Her three fledglings gone. Oriah drops her prey that easily. Hunger exiled along with the need to feed. Pain blossoms in her chest, spreads through her head until it blots out her eyes. She can't move, must move. Oriah hops out along the largest reaching limb, scans the forest floor. A moment later, she stands on the forest floor, hops along the ground, scans her movement. She cries, more cries, more hops, until she soars above again. A raccoon? Oriah sees no raccoons. And a possum, though. Oriah beats her great wings. What's it eating? Pale jaws start with blood. The possum gets the roaring of her great wings with a wide mouth. Are those tiny fingers gummed between its teeth? Only too perfectly then, in an instant by more lightning, a flash, Oraya finds her fragile issue torn up in there, choked down, each tiny skull crushed. Even if it's an empty mouth, that finally holds Oraya back. More pain from toes to sear. Beneath their tusks, her ears scream. Oriah beats her wings again, great wings thrown wide, rising slightly, talons sharper than threats. Even before she can dart at its eyes, lose her own screech. Feet scamper. Beneath brush and leaves, the possum retreats, vanishing with bloody jaws and mystery. Again, Oriah soars. All she can do now is listen. Instinct listens and instructs. Snap, 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 snap. Somehow altering her, tearing Oriah across a sky too terrible to cross. The three were still too young to fly, but old enough to try, and maybe they fell. 
She listens for their wide Silence answers Oriah's silent sweeps until after sweep after sweep after yet another adjustment of her great feathered head, she catches within a warmer thread of air a thinner stranger cry nearby. By flick of primaries, all nine, a quick spin returns Oriah with easy wing beats to her grove toward her tree, where the thinner stranger cry keeps growing louder, only she still sees her three fledglings. Three fledglings still gone. Or I a blind and notched to the black squirming thing at the center as she rounds by hops the high ridge of her nest. A frantic answer which quickly enough becomes its own frantic question. The black squirming thing crosses over to nuzzle its head against her downy chest. A cub. Not even a cub, but still a jaguar, a jaguar newborn. Oriah will eat it herself, swallow it whole. Only Oriah sees herself slam the tip of her bill through the thin layer of bone to dig out beneath the softer eats. She will take her time, too, tearing away and swallowing the rest of the meats. Only Oriah sees how the eyes are also sealed shut, and this confuses her. It causes her to see things, other things, her chicks when they were blind, too. And her mate, with his eyes wide, cast over their brood, cast over her, before he flew off and never returned. Oriah even sees that other great horned owl with their broken wings flipping over and over across the wounding ground, which is how somehow Oriah, by summer lightning and something else, finds new sight, which is when Oriah dives her beak into the back of the soft black and now thrumming head. Poor Carl.